Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, my name is Hisham Abdesattar Wahid and I am an assistant lecturer at the Department of English Language and Literature in the University of Muslim Surya. Uh, today I'm going to present you a lecture under the title uh, The Renaissance and its effects on English poetry. Uh, this lecture is dedicated to second year students. So, the Renaissance started in Europe in the late 15th century and the beginning of the 16th century as a cultural movement. Uh, the term Renaissance itself uh, comes from French and it basically means rebirth. The Europeans chose to call this movement the Renaissance or rebirth because it signifies the rebirth of European interest in the classical times well, as we might know that Europe uh, had great civilizations in classical times, including the Roman and the Greek civilization, which flourished with the philosophy, sciences, and literature. And then this period of time was followed by the medieval times or the Dark Ages. So after the Dark Ages comes the Renaissance, and that's why it was uh, called the rebirth of European interest in ancient Roman and, uh, Roman and Greek civilization knowledge. There are many characteristics that uh, are specific to the European Renaissance. Uh, the first and most important of all uh, was the fall of the Constantinople. Uh, Constantinople, a city which is in Turkey, uh, was the capital of the Byzantine uh, Empire. Uh, and when it fell to the Ottoman Turks, uh, that was like the signal or the spark uh, to the beginning of the Renaissance in Europe because most of the thinkers and the artists who used to live in Constantinople fled to Europe, specifically to Rome. Uh, and specifically to Rome because it was the capital of faith for, for, for the European Christians. Uh, the second reason for the Renaissance was the spread of geographical discoveries. Uh, as we all know that in the 15th and the 16th century, Europeans started to discover new continents across the oceans. They started expeditions to, uh, and for example, we all know that Christopher Columbus discovered North America and South America. And uh, with those geographical uh, discoveries started an European appetite for a new knowledge and new arts. And they have started to see uh, the human being as the center of the universe. Uh, another reason that led to the start of the Renaissance movement was the invention of printing. Uh, you see, previously uh, books were copied manually and it was copied by monasters, it was uh, copied by uh, clergymen, uh, men of religion who uh, worked in churches, uh, but that was only a retarded and old-fashioned way of copying books and it took so uh, long time to copy one book uh, perhaps even days to copy a single book but with the invention of the printing uh, they started to reprint books into uh, like thousands of copies which helped to spread literature and knowledge and science to all of Europe so the invention of printing was uh, of significance uh, of great significance for the Renaissance movement. The other uh, important uh, factor that led to the rise of Renaissance in Europe was the Copernican system and the discovery of uh, this system by Copernicus. Uh, he, his, he was the first to introduce a full uh, system of how the stars and planets work in the sky and he was the first one to suggest that it was the earth that is revolving around the sun rather than the opposite. Uh, this helped implement the ideas of humanism and uh, the Europeans started now uh, to believe in science more in religion to explain all of the uh, phenomena around them in the world. Uh, and this led to uh, expand uh, their need, to expand their appetite to acquire more knowledge about the world around them. Another reason that led to the rise of the Renaissance was uh, the need for reformation. Uh, well, as we know, uh, in the medieval times, Europe was divided into many kingdoms. And uh, in those kingdoms, uh, the church uh, was 
like a ruler the church ruled everything and everyone uh, it is even said that the church owned one-fifth of European lands at the time so there was obviously a need for reformation to make a new world order which would help civilians to uh, preserve their rights okay against uh, the monarchy and the power of the church the dogmatic church so the need for reformation led thinkers and artists to discover and to uh, uh, to read the classical books the classical uh, literature by uh, by the Greek and the Romans in order to uh, form or devise a new order which would help human beings live side by side together and uh, this need for reformation uh, actually was one of the main reasons to the rise of the Renaissance now uh, what we need to say is that uh, in our uh, in second year uh, poetry for the second year students uh, we do not study the Renaissance in general, but study the Renaissance in terms of its relation to English poetry and how it affected England in the 16th century. What we have to keep in mind is that uh, the first thing we need to know about English Renaissance is that the Renaissance arrived late to, uh, to England because when it arrived to England, it had already started a hundred years ago in Italy, in Europe. And the reason for that is, is that was England was in the middle of civil wars, very famous civil wars. They're called the War of the Roses. With the end of those wars and the victory of the Theodores, they started the ruling dynasty, which started with Henry the Seventh and then Henry the Eighth and then Elizabeth. Uh, the English Renaissance had many uh, characteristics that uh, makes it a little bit distinct from European Renaissance. Uh, this is of course justified because the English personality is a little bit different to the European personality uh, and in England uh, the Renaissance uh, started with literature rather than with, uh, with uh, visual arts uh, we can see uh, the leading uh, Renaissance or 16th century poets are Thomas White, Henry Howard, Edmund Spencer, uh, Walter Raleigh, Christopher Marlowe and Shakespeare. Uh, they started to write poetry between the beginning of the 16th century and the beginning of the 17th century. And uh, during those times, uh, they uh, have started to explore new themes and uh, new philosophies in literature and in poetry. The first one, and the most important one in my opinion, was humanism. Uh, humanism is a term uh, when used in literature refers to the interest, to the growing interest of artists, of writers in the 16th century in the human being itself. Uh, before this age, uh, people used to uh, write literature about the gods and about kings and about uh, angels and about Jesus Christ. But after the rise of the Renaissance and after of its arrival to England, uh, appeared the movement that is known as humanism which means that poetry started to deal with the issues and the matters of the average human being of everyday life about his emotions about uh, his ideas about his thoughts about his courage about his fears okay about uh, everything that he might face in his life uh, the uh, 16th century English poetry also uh, 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 was significant for its uh, dealing with uh, naturalism which means that it dealt with a lot of themes from nature okay and this is uh, this is evident in many poems and by many poets like William Shakespeare or Christopher Marlowe who dealt uh, who took imagery uh, from nature from the outer nature okay uh, it uh, the Renaissance and 16th century English poetry is also significant for the uh, themes that they used like the courtly love tradition uh, rejected love about the meaning of life those are some of the common themes that we can find in poetry in this era so uh, the first uh, poet that we can discuss as an example for Renaissance England is Thomas Wyatt who was a poet and a son of a famous poet he was also a courtier 
which means that he was he used to work and live in court and uh, he uh, wrote uh, many uh, poems uh, dealing with courtly love tradition the first of uh, those poems might be uh, for example this poem farewell uh, which is a poem dedicated to uh, a beloved uh, with uh, the, the, the main theme or the central theme of the poem is uh, courtly love or uh, rejected love we might say uh, in the poem the speaker is addressing a lady uh, uh, asking her to say the final goodbye or the final farewell uh, because he has now discovered that she has betrayed him and that she is no good to be his lover so the poem goes as follows farewell what should I say since faith is dead and truth away from you is fled should I be led with doubleness nay nay mistress I promised you and you promised me to be as true as I would be but since I see your double heart farewell my part though for to take it is not my mind but to forsake one so unkind and as I find so will I trust farewell unjust can you say nay but that you said that I always should be obeyed and thus betrayed or that I wist farewell unkissed this is only one of the poems written in the 16th century and only one of the poems that were written by Thomas White but it is a very good representative for all the other poems uh, first of all it has uh, one of the uh, most common themes during this time which is rejected love or we can say courtly love uh, second it is also characterized by its copying of the uh, sonnet of the Italian sonnet uh, Thomas White was the first poet to introduce the Italian sonnet or the Petrarchian sonnet into the English audience and with Thomas White it started to evolve until it reached its final destination with Shakespeare and it has become uh, to be known as the Shakespearean sonnet or the English sonnet. Uh, this is only an introduction to English Renaissance and European Renaissance in general. Thank you so much for listening and hopefully, hopefully next time we will continue our discussion of the Renaissance. Thank you so much.